Vegas sponsorship that took him to the title last year. And the man who will be covering the pit action here at Delaware today, Todd Lewis, is with Mark. Thanks, Pat. I'm with defending champion Mark Dilley. Mark, you've had a tough time in practice and in qualifying, but you're in the show. This is uh, not a good way to start your first race, though. No, we've uh, we've definitely had a tough weekend. Uh, all the guys in the Seget 2 Caesar crew, they've worked hard. Uh, we're a bit behind the eight ball, but we're going to come back, I think. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start this race in the in the back spot there and try and work our way up. If we can get a tenth place finish out of this, we'll be really happy. It's a long way to go to the front of the field, Pat, but he is the defending champion. Todd, if there's a driver who can get to the front here at Delaware this afternoon, starting that far back, it's Mark Dilley. Earlier, the drivers had a chance to take to the half mile oval here at Delaware in qualifying, trying to beat Steve Robley's three-year-old record of 20.717 seconds in qualifying, Craig, and they sure did. Well, you bet they did, and you know, Cascar helped all of them go a little faster. They repaved the inside of this racetrack, made a big difference to the, the way the car sticks in the corner. But you know, the serious teams over the winter, Pat, spend a long time on the dyno looking for that elusive extra horsepower and that extra mid-range torque that gets the cars off the corners better. But by the way these cars qualified, a lot of them have got some extra horses under the hood this year. Well, Steve Robley's qualifying mark was shattered very early when number 74, Duke Sachuk, in the Pontiac Grand Prix, turned a lap at 20.613 seconds to set the early mark. That stood up until number 7, Sean Dupuis, in the Monte Carlo, turned in a lap at 20.552 seconds. That looked as though it would be the pole position, but then with qualifying winding down, local driver number 10, Paul Mathers, in the Ford Thunderbird, shattered qualifying with a lap at 20.457 seconds. He will start on the pole position here today at Delaware Speedway. So the Mopar Fast 4 looks like this. Top qualifier is Paul Mathers in the Motion Thunderbird, who knocked almost three-tenths of a second off the record. Second was the defending Eastern Cascar Series champ, Sean Dupuis. Next up, Duke Sawchuk, who has abandoned his six-cylinder program, opting for the V8-powered Grand Prix. And rounding out the Mopar Fast 4 is the 93 Cascar champ, Kerry Mix. Part of the great crowd here at Delaware Speedway Park as the Dodge Avenger pace car starts to roll. There you see Mathers and Dupuy up front. Sawchuk and Mix, Neil Fair, Billy Rouse Jr., then the veteran Earl Ross, Jim Patrick, the local driver, and the rest of the lineup, Peter Gibbons, starting 12th. He'll do some ARCA races this year as well. And some rookies this year, Pat. Robin Buck on row 12 with the Pontiac Performance Team, and he holds the closed course record in a production Corvette at 189 mile an hour. 34th on the grid there, Kelly Williams, and right at the back, Mark Dilley and Mike Herniak. You wouldn't expect those drivers to be that far back, but they've both been fighting handling problems as the crew tries to chase the setup. And we go on board with Kerry Mix warming up the tires as Matt Lake holds out the one-lap white flag for the start of the Mopar 200. Cascar officials getting the mid-packers to move up as the field hits the new pavement in corner three. Mathers and Dupuy right up front. The Duker, Duke Sachuk, sitting back there in the second row along with Kerry Mix. And now they come up to speed off of turn four. The green flag flies, and we're racing here at Delaware Speedway. Down on the inside of the racetrack, Mathers grabs the lead as Dupuy rides the high side off of turn number two. Down the back chute for the first time. And it is Mathers running out in front. Dupuy in second. 74, Duke Sachuk in third. 55, Neil Fair in fourth. Kerry Mix runs back in fifth. As they complete lap one, caution flag is out. And some body work picked up by Cascar's Don Damaris as Mark Dilley gets ready for the restart. Cars still formed up in their original starting positions. There is Mathers again coming up to speed off of turn four as they head back to the stripe. And now we go on board with Duke Sachuk as the field once again comes under green, side by side for the lead. Dupuy up on the high side. Sachuk sitting right on the rear bumper of Mathers, and he has jumped up into that second place position. Dupuy got a little bit wide, and he's dropped all the way back into the fourth place spot. So they're shuffling positions up front early in this Mopar 200. Back to the stripe. It is Mathers, number 10, in the fourth Thunderbird. Then Sachuk side by side for third now. Neil Fair, 55, will hold on to third, and this is the battle for fifth. The veteran Earl Ross, 92, in the Thunderbird, up against Kerry Mix in that new Monte Carlo. Mix up on the outside, looking for that fifth place position, and he'll try to go around the outside of Earl Ross, and he'll grab the fifth place.
play spotted by hip the stripe. Well, Earl Ross got a good jump, Pat. He started in seventh, and Bill Rouse Jr. in the lookalike T-Bird, he started in sixth. And you know, Bill's been around for a long time, got a lot of experience. I used to race with his dad, and his dad was aggressive, and Bill is the same way. Great battle here for third place, almost three wide off of turn four. John Dupuy, number seven there, will hold on to third. Gary Mix has moved up to fourth, and then Neil Fair in the 55, running back in fifth. But the drivers really battling for positions early. Oh, the 15 car there of Jim Patrick just smacked the wall, and we saw it there from our Prestone Sony wall camp as he got a little bit wide coming off of turn four. Gary Mix in that Midas Monte Carlo running in the third place position, and he has closed on the leader, Paul Mathers and Duke Sotchuk. Well, the number 10 motion Ford team stayed up all night changing the engine after Paul grenaded it yesterday during a heat race. Paul told me that he got some sleep, but I'm sure the crew is a little worse for the wear. Well, Mather's still running at the head of this quartet in that fourth Thunderbird, 74 Duke Sachuk, and now we go on board with Duke Sachuk as he battles for the lead side by side with Mather's. Sachuk down on the inside of the racetrack. Mather's getting hung up on that outside groove, and it's not working that well. Sachuk takes the lead. Here comes Kerry Mix looking for the pass up in a second, and he will get it. A nice move there by Kerry Mix as he followed Duke Sachuk around the pole sitter, Paul Mathers. So once again, they are shuffling those positions. Fast and furious up front, and there goes Dupuy. Sean Dupuy, number seven in his Monte Carlo, jumps up into the third place spot. Oh, tap there is number 20, Scott Lindsay, and 23, Jesse Kennedy got into it. They were battling there for the ninth place position. And now we go on board with the 17 of DJ Kennington, the teenager, running in 12th. And just ahead of him in the Goodrich Monte Carlo is Dan Shirtliff. You can see just how close these cars are running. And now it is, oh, spin up in front of Kennington. Neil Fair, 55, loops it around. Kennington just inches by to avoid that. And the yellow caution flag is out one more time here at Delaware. Well, more happened than the Neil Fair spin out there, Pat. And here's Peter Gibbons into the pit, and here's what happened to Peter from Brad Jake's Dynamax Avenger on board camera. He plane runs into the back of Brad and looks to have a bent steering arm in the pits. The crew's working hard to fix it at the moment. There are the Midas standings with Sachuk leading Mix, Dupuy, Rouse, and Paul Sitter Mathers. Then it's Ross, Lindsay, Kennedy Turner, and Jack Monahan in 10th. And we'll be back with more from the Mopar 200 after this. Welcome back to the Mopar 200 Cascar Super Series race for the Casco Cup. And Pat, we've got more pit action. Well, Craig, we've had another caution during that break, bringing in front runners Kerry Mix and Sean Dupuy, along with 55 Neil Fair. This third yellow was the result of two Ford drivers running each other off in corner two. That's Mathers and Earl Ross hooked together. And then another Mopar replay shows number 12. Mark Patrick slam into Brad Jake's Dynamax Avenger. And Brad's been taking a pretty good beating out there today, Pat. Craig, a lot of drivers have been taking a beating out there. There's been a lot of contact in the first half of this race. We're back to green flag racing, 74. Duke Sachuk is your leader as they work the back chute. Well, Duke's key tour team are on a steep learning curve using a V8 engine instead of the customary six cylinders. And he told me earlier that Jack Monahan, who's in the lookalike number 44 car, has helped them a whole lot with his V8 experience. And it sure looks like it's paying off for the Duke today, Pat. We now go on board with DJ Kennington, the Sony STP camera giving us these pictures as Kennington battles for the sixth place position. In fact, going with Jack Monahan, number 44. Monahan, there you see him down to the inside of the racetrack. He will take that sixth place position away from the teenager Kennington as they hit the stripe. Monahan qualified 18th. He has jumped up into that sixth place position and he has been on a charge to the first half of this race. There's 75, Mike Herniak. He will go a lap down as the leader, Duke Sachuk, goes around the 75 STP Pontiac. Well, he may be a lap down now, Pat, but Herniak's a tough competitor, and you can look to see him put that STP car back up near the front before this is over. Herniak gets tapped by Jesse Kennedy, number 23. Billy Rouse Jr., 38, goes high, and Kennedy will jump up into that second-place position. So Mike Herniak, a lap down, but he is in the thick of this battle going on for second place between the 23 of Jesse Kennedy and 38 Billy Rouse. They will try to split... Herniak going into turn number two, and Rouse jumps back up into that second place position. There is Jesse 
Jamie Kennedy running in the third place position. He started back in 13th, so he has done a nice job of getting up through the field. The number 20 car of Scott Lindsay running in the fourth place position. He is yet to make his pit stop. Al Turner in the 16 car running fifth and off. Spin off at turn four. It is Beauchamp hits the wall. There's 95. Robin Buck is involved as well as the 92 car of Earl Ross. It looked as though Beauchamp may have got into the back of Robin Buck. Earl Ross is on his way. Well, the Mopar replay shows number 95, Robin Buck, and 60, Ron Beauchamp Jr. in an Avenger touching. Then Buck gets 180 degrees out of shape. Then number 27, Junior Reagan, just misses Beauchamp. A number of other drivers also do a nice job of avoiding the incident, but not Earl Ross. As on pit road now, we've got more activity. There is John Gott in the 06. Duke Sachuk, 74, his stop completed, and there's Earl Ross. And that will put Rouse at the front as Jesse Kennedy makes a routine stop. And here's Pat with our Dynamax timeout. The focus for most race fans when they come out to the track is to watch the close racing and excitement produced by professionals like Brad Jakes and the Dynamax Dodge Avenger. Well, that's not all that's going on this weekend here at Delaware Speedway because Chrysler has brought out its motorsport caravan, and it's a good one. Just imagine having a chance to get close to the 700-horsepower Walker Evans off-road racing truck or the six-time Sports Car Clubs of America championship-winning Eagle Talon. There's even one of the neons from the Skip Barber Racing School. Or my favorite for getting down to the corner convenience store, the V10 Dodge Viper Show Car. So for race fans here at Delaware Speedway this weekend for the Mopar 200, there'll be plenty to watch both on and off the racetrack. And on the track, we now have a great battle between two juniors, Bill Rouse Jr. and Junior Reagan in the number 27 Dodge Avenger. These two fell heir to the lead after our last round of pit stops with Terry Mix working his way back up into third place in the Midas Monte Carlo. And Mix is definitely closing on this front-running pair as they work their way off of turn number two. We take a look at our Prestone update. The driver's running on the lead lap. There you see Gibbons in fifth. Brad Jakes running in the sixth place position. The pole center Mathers is back in ninth as we've had a real shuffling of the top 10 with all these pit stops. And now we go on board the Sony STP camera giving us this bumper shot of the battle between 16, Al Turner and number 20, Scott Lindsay. That is the battle going on for the seventh place position. Meanwhile, up front, the two juniors, Billy Rouse and the fourth Thunderbird, having a battle for the lead, but Mix continues to close. We go on board one more time. The bumper cam of Brad Jakes giving us a great shot of this action as Jakes is having a war with the 16 car of Al Turner for that sixth place position. Here's Turner. Oh, he just smacks into the back of Jakes. And you can see the damage to the fiberglass. Earl Ross slowing into corner one. He may have cut a tire down, bringing out another yellow. And Rouse, who was leading, making his mandatory pit stop. So we'll be back with more action from Delaware right after this. Welcome back to our first of eight Cascar Lake Model Super Series races. We'll be telecasting this year. I'm Pat Gonzalez along with Craig Hill and Todd Lewis. And while we're away, we had more action and another yellow. The Mopar replay shows Brad Jakes losing it on the restart and taking off the left front corner of his Dodge Avenger. Then number 27, Junior Reagan, cut down a rear right tire on the debris, sending him to the pits and to the back of the pack. Tough break for Junior Reagan in that Peter Shatanis prepared Dodge Avenger. He had qualified 16 and worked his way up to the front. There is the race leader, Kerry Mix, as we go back to the live action. Mix in the Monte Carlo, leading shirtlift. Then it is Kennedy on oh, sideways. The number nine car there of Peter Gibbons having some handling problems. Here is the lead battle. Mix in the 0-2. Dan Shirtlip in that number three. Oh, and Shirtlip taps the wall off of turn four. He does have a problem there. A flat right front tire for Dan Shirtlip in that Goodrich Monte Carlo. He had been running in second, but he taps the wall, and he'll have to head to the pits. There's his crew chief, Tim Ellis, on the radio as number three, Shirtlip, will bring it out of pit row. Well, Shirtlip stayed out of everybody's way, Pat, and they haven't thrown a yellow. So Shirtlift's going to have to fit under the green, and that's going to hurt his chances for the day. 0-2, Kerry Mix, still your leader. 23, Jesse Kennedy in that second-place position. There is Al Turner in that number 16 car. He runs in the fifth-place position as he goes around Ron Beauchamp Jr. as they battle down the back straightaway here at Delaware Speedway. There's Junior Reagan back out on the racetrack after pitting to replace that flat tire. The battle for the lead. Oh, spin by number 12, Mark Patrick, as he loops it 
run to the front in that number 23 car. And there goes Mix up alongside. They'll battle wheel to wheel down the back straightaway into turn number three. Mix down on the low side of the racetrack. Kennedy staying right with them. And now as they come off of turn number four, Kerry Mix will once again go to the front. 74, the red car. Is Sawchuck in third? Billy Rouse Jr. is closed. He runs in the fourth place position. So once again, we've got four drivers tied together for the lead. Well, you can see Kerry shaking his fist at Kennedy. So he's obviously hot at him. And now Billy Rouse comes up to join the battle in third place. While they're just swapping positions at the front of the field, Kennedy's still your leader, but Mix got shuffled back into fourth. Here comes Kerry Mix up to the inside on Billy Rouse Jr. As they pair off a Duke Sotchuk, number 74, will grab the lead. Down on the inside comes Jesse Kennedy. He will go underneath as he closes on the 42 car here of Steve Betteridge. Betteridge, a lapped car, and Kennedy with the lead. Sotchuk, there goes Rouse right in between Betteridge and Sotchuk. Sotchuk gets pushed up to the outside into the marbles. And it is 23, Jesse Kennedy in a wild and woolly Mopar 200. Kennedy, 23-year leader. The 38 of Billy Rouse Jr. running in second. Kerry Mix is third. And they will put another lap on the 75 car of Mike Herniak in that STP Pontiac. The race leader, Jesse Kennedy, car number 23, just ahead. The Thunderbird of 38, Billy Rouse Jr., down about four or five car lengths back, is that 0-2 car of Kerry Mix, and now they're closing on the number 11 car of Terry Simpson. Oh, and Simpson gets tapped in the back by Kennedy, who pulls right out in front, and there's the caution flag out one more time. Kennedy got into the back of the 11 car of Terry Simpson, and then that will bring out yet another caution here at Delaware. Well, that'll give us a chance to see that squeeze move that Bill Rouse Jr. put on 74 Sawchuck and Simpson. He just stuck his nose in there and used Sawchuck's Pontiac to turn into the corner, pushing the Duke up into the marbles. And this Mopar replay shows a move here under caution by Kerry Mix as he goes around Billy Rouse Jr. and actually taps Jesse Kennedy, showing him that he did not like a couple of the moves on the racetrack by the driver of the 23 car. And here is the running order as we're about to go back to racing. It is Kennedy, your leader, Billy Rouse Jr., Mix Monahan, Turner, and Kevin Trevelin. The cars forming up as they head down the back straightaway. The lap cars on the inside, lead lap cars up to the outside. Well, it's great to see the veteran Jack Monahan up into fourth. Jack is known as one of the toughest drivers here at Delaware, and he can put on a good show when he's hot. Green flag back out at Delaware Speedway as Jesse Kennedy will lead the drivers up across the start-finish line. Billy Rouse Jr. running in that second-place position. Kerry Mix in third. Mix off to a little bit of a slow start here as the front-running two cars. Kennedy, number 23, and Rouse, 38, have got about 10 car lengths on Kerry Mix. As they work off of turn number four, back to the stripe. You can see Rouse looking for an opening to try to get around that 23 car of Jesse Kennedy. Off of turn, oh, a little bit of a nudge there by Billy Rouse Jr. Oh, and number 23, Jesse Kennedy just about spun the car. Here comes Kennedy on the inside into turn three, and he will retake the lead as now that little move up front has allowed Kerry Mix to close up on Kennedy and Rouse. Rouse takes another look on the inside, going into turn number one. These two drivers are having a war for the lead, and now, oh, number 23, Kennedy gets tapped again by Rouse. He loops it around. He backs it into the wall. Well, it looked more like a shot than a tap to me, Pat, and the Mopar replay shows an impatient Rouse as he times the bump perfectly and turns Jesse into the infield wall. And Todd Lewis reports from the pits that Rouse will get a stop-and-go penalty, and we'll be back with the conclusion of the Mopar 200 after this. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway in the final lap of the Mopar 200. The starter shows the white flag as Kerry Mix is the new leader after Billy Rouse Jr. knocked Jesse Kennedy out of the lead. There is Mix followed by Turner, 16, 44, Monahan, 38, Billy Rouse Jr., and then 28, Kevin Trevlin. There you saw Duke Sawchuk, 74, as he catches up there running in the seventh place position. And there's Kerry Mix getting the jump on Al Turner as they come off of turn number four. The white flag indicating the last lap and the green flag flies here at Delaware. Kerry Mix with a big jump on Al Turner as they come off of turn number two, working the back straight away for the final time. Billy Rouse Jr. is all over Monaghan. He'll jump up into third. Kerry Mix through turn three, 
just one quarter to go. Kerry Mix in the minus. Monte Carlo off of turn four. There's the checkered flag, and Mix will win it. Al Turner will finish in second. There's Richard Miller and the Midas crew celebrating the victory here at Delaware. And here are the Midas final standings with Mix followed by Turner, Grouse, Monahan, and Trevlin. Then it's Sawchuck, Reagan, Kennedy, Gibbons, and Herniak. Craig, I think Kerry proved that being patient can be rewarding. He outweighed the Kennedy Roush battle and led for 51 laps. And in doing so, now leads the Eastern National Point standings over Roush, Duke Sawchuck, and here's Pat with the happy winner. What a way to start this 95 campaign after that disappointing season last year. Boy, you won a war out there here this afternoon at Delaware. Yeah, it was a tough one those last 10 laps, but uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of a battle at the end there, and and uh, we made it through. I didn't know if we were those last five, but uh, it was a rough one, but we made it through, and that's right on to start the season. Bill, let's uh, get your side of the story. What happened out there with you and Jesse? Well, Jesse and I got to racing pretty hard, and, and um, I went to the outside. He wouldn't give me enough room, so I went to the inside. He, he slipped, and I filled the hole, and he, he just gassed it off the corner come down across, and... I was in one of them situations where if I lift, I'm in the wreck. If I don't, I'm okay, you know. And, and you know, I'm a very competitive person, and, and right to the very end, I like to race. Well, Craig Hill, quite a battle over the last five laps. Caution flags, yellow flags, and finally the checkered flag, and Kerry Mix is there to take the win. Well, race strategy went out the window with five laps to go, Pat, that's for sure. But nothing but black flags and fines are the answer for the day. But Kerry Mix did a fine job. He's been there all weekend, and he really drove an excellent race. Well, a great start to the 95 campaign for 93 champion Kerry Mix in that Midas Monte Carlo. We'll see you next from Cayuga Speedway for Craig Hill and Todd Lewis. This is Pat Gonzalez saying so long from Delaware Speedway Park. The Mopar 200 has been brought to you in part by Mopar Performance Parts, your first choice. Castrol, manufacturers of GTX. GM Goodwrench Service Plus and AC Delco. STP and Prestone. And Dynamax Performance Parts. This event was sanctioned by CASCAR, Canadian Association for Stock Car Auto Racing.